Good morning, chickens. Haven't they grown? Absolutely. They've pooed on top of their brooder as well. Look at the feathers they've developed. They're looking fantastically healthy. I think it's time for you little girls to maybe move into the porch. Give you a clean out later on today. After I've been into work. Aren't they cute though? And confident. That one at the back looks rather evil. It's got one of those like evil eyes. Like a raptor. Anyway, off to work. Hey, Reg. He's fascinated by him, aren't you, my friend? Who's that? Is that biscuits? Come on, then. Come on, then. Way up, way up, right. I think some people are going to reckon I'm not quite right in the head. So we intend to brew Monday, yeah? <laughs> well... I've decided <laughs> to give myself a little challenge. So we need more space in here rapidly. I've been weighing up what we're going to do with all the canned stock in the warm weather as well as the hops and all the bottle stock and keg. We've only got three cold rooms which houses a total of six pallets with the end cold room being a cold store for the hops and other perishable items and I do think that we have a lot of wasted space along this back edge that could essentially be reclaimed where we've got this shelving and this pallet racking this uh, steel racking so really the steel racking can continue to exist but just up on that mezzanine floor which gives it more space so I think we extend the cold rooms out to here to the end of these steps if you like or almost take this unit down shelving rearrange the fermenters pretty much as they are so they run along the back edge around that corner and then we'll just have these last two which will be renamed one and two just on the end the last one coming to about where the ladders are and then that should give us from like the end of the cold room here to the first fermenter there should be enough room to get a normal sized pallet through not just a euro but a normal one well what we have to do is make sure we can bring the pallets that the cans come on through that gap which are particularly large as you can see when they've got these protectors on the top they're big pallets, they're big old pallets probably about 13-1400 wide sometimes so apart from just trying to rejig how these fermenters are going to stand in that corner I think that's what we're going to do and then what I'll do is extend this walkway like this, remove this sink which while the pilot kit was there it would have been useful but on reflection I don't think we're going to be using it too much because I think it'll be quite a job to keep up with brewing this summer for can and cask. So we'll extend the, the little walkway around the back of these fermenters. That means we can get into all the fermenters. What I'll probably do is just take that one out over there and just bring it over here and just snip it in and join it up. Shouldn't be a problem. Seems pretty easy. Take this stuff off the wall. Swap out uh, that large chiller at the back at some point for one that can probably service all these tanks. Not sure if it's going to be <clears throat> man enough to do it, just one of them. If not, we can bring these across as well as the fermenters, and they can just live behind the fermenters. That's not going to be a problem. So, all this has got to be relocated by Monday. 
and obviously I've just cocked up all the numbering on my FEs now so I'm going to have to check, take the fronts off all of these and swap them around which will involve undoing the wires on the STC I think if I'm going to be that pedantic I'm not sure if that needs doing straight away they function all the same this is all the cardboard and stuff that's come down from the shelving that shelving I think we can just drop backwards behind this wall so it'll sit in that gap there, I've measured it, it fits and when that goes in that'll bring the shelving across this way by the depth of that little wall there which is about 600 mil so where the base of these uh, pallet racking drops here it's going to move this way 600 millimeters giving us plenty of space that side and then when this is on the other side I could either lift this mezzanine up more not mezzanine this partition wall or I could remove the partition wall and that will give me access to the coolers along the back edge that's a that's quite a quite a good option really the only drawback is I'm gonna lose I'm gonna lose my Harrison's Brewery circle but I can paint another one of them somewhere else no problem I think so yeah that might be the way to go forwards and then we've got all the fermenters on one side of the unit and that's going to make it a lot easier for cleaning because I can just blast all that edge that's a good edge it all runs down this way whereas this edge it can go that way or that way which is why we see we've still got some hop leaf down here look from when we did the uh, the Bernie Sanders I think that was yeah you can kind of see look where the water's running kind of trickles down here it just misses the cold room so it's always awkward to get round the back and spray things forwards whereas that side I can just jet it towards the wall and as soon as it hits the wall I can force it down the wall and then when it gets over here to my acid storage it kind of it slopes that way and that way so it has no choice but to come forwards and into the drain which is perfect so yeah I was in the process of cleaning these tanks tank one and tank two are pretty much finished just got to rinse the caustic out of tank two tank three needs a clean tank four needs a clean but I thought well while, while I was stood here <laughs> you know what I'm like folks I just couldn't help but just drag everything out and yeah I've essentially decided now is the time to move things around if it's going to be done at all while we're still pretty much closed essentially and then I think we can get um, they were a metre each those room uh, those tanks so five metres will take us up to that leg thereabouts maybe four metres so that will give us essentially room for eight more pallets or four more cold rooms basically just a duplicate of that and then we can have the mezzanine on top and more storage more floor space so all that junk on the back then can just live up in the air on top of the cold rooms we might not get the cold rooms built for another few months but I just wanted to bring it out so I could see if it worked or not and visualize it and now I can see that it's probably going to be a little bit more convenient in terms of cleaning the place I think we're going to go ahead and do it the only drawback of course is we can't get the van in we don't really bring it in anyway since I put these uh, sh this pallet rack in there so I don't think that's a problem if we need to do any work on the van we can just do it in the yard so yeah it's gonna we, we need the space essentially so it's tough titty well it's quarter past five and I'm a little bit puffed out look at all this Let's zoom out a little bit and give you an impression. So apart from this one tank that's got some Pilsner in it, you can see it kind of works. So if I just extend that Harrison's Brewery logo bit just across to the end of this frame here, 
then this section will provide us a walkway for the back of the tanks a wall partition between the two that side we've got packing racking and washing this side we've got production and storage with the mezzanine and the cold rooms extending across here as far as maybe there so it gives you an idea of the space this tanks gonna live here and we've got a 600 mil walkway down the back and then once these stairs have gone back to join onto that case there or actually that case will come forwards to join onto this one but you know where I'm coming from I think we'll have enough room looking at that pallet truck there we'll have enough room easily to zip down here and in with the biggest of pallets that's a new view isn't it there's the boards from this partition wall which is now no longer there so opening the space up to maximize what we can you can see that corner over there where the uh, wall juts backwards it's been foamed up and cemented and all sorts in the past I think it's time we Give it a lick of paint and just tidied it up a touch. Oh dear, I must say I'm exhausted. It's quarter seven. I think it's time to go home. I'm not going to be reinstating this wall. Instead, well I kind of am. Tell a lie. Instead what we're going to do is utilise this racking system instead. And we'll put the decking to walk down the back of the fenters along here so I might even put I don't know might might put some steps this end or something but that end should be fine and then we'll be able to get up get access to the top shelves and then also I've got two bars here which I'll just probably put along here and they will act as handrails for one side I could put a board on them if I wanted to in the future from the other side and then I'll be able to hang things on that wall I'm also thinking about using uh, one of those pallet um, racks to make a shelf here we'll see the other alternative because of the state of this floor is we shutter the floor off just the other side of this pallet racking make a ledge or I could do it just that side actually I suppose it wouldn't make much difference make a ledge fill it with concrete so this section is level same as that because when I moved in I had to do a little bit of shuttering work just on this section here that had all collapsed so as you can see this is all new concrete down here this was done Probably about three or four years ago now, I think. I can't remember. Um, so, yeah, we could just continue that to try and square this space off a little bit. Someone's had a go at it in the past, and it's obviously failed and broken away. And then from this section here, where it comes and meets this edge, I, could, I suppose I could come straight out of there, look. Kind of high, same height as that section there. And then I'll put some more concrete in here to try and level it so we can get a ramp going a nice probably 1 in 12 slope, it's only got to climb 2 inches so it can go out 3 foot, 4 foot just a steady slope and then we can pull up the pallet truck when it's laden with either empty casks that have been washed to take them in there to clean or pallets full of boxes or whatever we need to move around at the time we'll see I don't know it could be anything so it looks like a real mess but um, I broke the back of it the timber from that wall all the studs I've got them lent up against 
the side of the cold room there, that will provide me framing for the decking to make up the section that this bit doesn't cover. So we're going to take this out. We'll slide this down here as far as it needs to go. And then from the end, it's got to join in and meet that section there, which is only about six to eight feet of infill. I've already got a piece of plywood, 600 mil wide, lent up there, which is perfect for the job, bit of 18 mil. And I've got a couple of sheets over there as well, if I need to use them. But there we go, folks, what a job. So sink gone, don't need that. All the fermenters in one side, squashed five and one together a little bit there, I'll have to sort that out. And I think, yeah, maximize space with the future in mind. I think this will be fine, yeah, and then I can kind of on a, on a canning day or whatever, push the canning machines here where the pilot kit is, that's up there, look. Uh, we can can in this space, no problem. Wash down, no problem. See if I can get some resin for the floor. I know I spoke to Martin about it a few weeks back. And it's a, it's potentially an option. Now that I've done this, we can put a drain in here where this crack is. So that'll be twofold. Initially, it'll repair the crack. And secondly, it'll add drainage to the floor which is only an advantage and then if we can get some resin over the top of it I think uh, yeah it's going to be kind of bulletproof for years to come then and of course it'll make it a little bit cleaner because I'll just be able to rinse straight down into the drain instead of having to sweep the whole floor off every time I've finished a brew day it'll be a lot, a lot easier to cope with so I've drained the glycol out of this chiller. That's all in this bucket, full, pretty much. There we go. So that means I should be able to lift that down now. I've drained the glycol out of that chiller. That's in there. So I should be able to lift that down. And then there are two more chillers behind this fermenter which I need to drain and then move and then once they're out of the way I will be able to disconnect this stair and pull it all away then I'll have to think about where we're going to put a stair to get onto the mezzanine do I want to do the mezzanine extension right away and just have the cold rooms studded out you know what I'm like, I'll probably run it to the end and get it finished if I was going to do it. Oh, we'll see, we'll see. I've only just moved all that junk into that corner, so maybe not. We might just leave that as is for now. Have this as storage space just to put some pallets and stuff while we get this up and running operational again. And then maybe later on in April or something, we'll think about creating some more cool space. Because when the warm weather comes... We need to keep our stock in tip-top condition. doesn't matter so much today because it's pretty nippy. But in the future, cold store essential, I think, or extension of. Right, there we go, folks. What a day that's been. I never anticipated doing all of this, but away she goes. Always ends up being something like this, doesn't it? So I will see you on the next one. Cheers. Well... I didn't go home, still here, just uh, freaked myself out massively, so I'm cutting the stairs out, I'm round here of course chopping through this cable and I'm plugged directly into a wire that I'm chopping through, that was a smart move, anyway the flash was big I'm fine, it's a plastic double insulated tool of course, I didn't get shocked, but the spark and then consequently the termination of any power to anything in the building 
was quite a surprise. I knew straight away what I'd done when I saw the flash. I thought, you absolute numbskull. So it's this cable here, there's the other end of it, runs into this socket, which I'd just like to point out, oh, I can't plug it in, is now dead. So I'm going to take the front off that and remove the offending other end, or I might terminate it because I might want to use that another time actually to stick some more sockets along the front of the new cold room so I'll probably just stick that in a chocolate block to be fair but I've cut through the uh, thingy the stairs are off um, I can't get these screws out underneath here so I'm just gonna have to let it fall down and tear itself out unfortunately not a problem, it's just uh, there's some big old screws in here and even with the impact driver it's difficult to move them. So that now should be free essentially, I should be able to cop hold of it and drag it out this way. I think I'm going to leave the steps on so we'll be able to have step access here as well as yonder which uh, will be convenient, I've measured it. And it seems to be just about right.